So it's that time of year again and we're looking at desiccating for canola. So whether you're a guy that likes to swath or you're a guy that wants to straight cut your canola, you kind of have to look for the same thing. So the first thing that we're going to look for is we're going to pull a plant out of the field. I took one of the more uh, greener plants in the field just to get an idea. And what you're going to look for is you're going to look for the main branch on the main stem. So when you're looking at the main stem from top to bottom, it depends on what you're using. So if we're going to be swathing, you'd want to look at that 50 to 60% color change. So you'd got to go halfway up that main stem. You'd want to open up one of these pods and you're going to look for color change. See if I can get one to stay in there. So obviously this one is full color change all the way 50 to 60% up the main stem. So if you're going to be using different products, so there's only about three products that are labeled in canola in the U.S. for desiccation purposes. There's Roundup, Roundup and Sharpen, and Diquat or Reglone. Okay, Paraquat's not labeled, so don't use a Paraquat. But in Diquat, you want to see color change all the way up to the very top. So you want 90% color change. Color change does not mean a full black kernel. You want to see some type of color change. So whether it's yellowing or a little bit of brown on that seed, that's what you want to see. With Roundup and Sharpen, you can actually go earlier. They're slower working products. So with a Roundup and Sharpen, Roundup by itself, you can start about the same timing as you would for swathing, that 50 to 60% color change. If you're throwing Sharpen in the tank with your glyphosate, I would want to go up to 75% color change. It still works fairly quickly, so you want to give it time to work. But when you see that color change, don't do a drive-by on the field, and that's how I'm going to determine if I'm ready to spray. This plant is actually fairly green, but I, we do see some color change happening towards the top end of this plant. So make sure you take the time to walk out in your canola fields before you start spraying. My name is Christy Sundin. I'm a field agronomist in North Dakota. With this year's late planting, we can't forget about our sunflower crop on the desiccation front as well. Uh, sunflowers are maturing up nicely. They got pretty good plant health in them overall, I'd say, throughout our region. And we're sitting in a good spot to look at desiccating them here in the next 10, 12 days. Uh, one of the key factors you want to look at in the sunflower plant is the backs of the head getting yellow. And then you want to look at these bracts as well. Uh, as these bracts start to dry down from the tip across the shoulders. Uh, I kind of give you an indication of where the maturity is laying at for, for percent moisture content in our sunflower seeds. We want to try to target about 30-35% moisture and uh, these bracts will probably be coming across the shoulders or the brown across the bracts will be coming across the shoulders of these bracts and uh, indicating that percent moisture range. Uh, the common herbicides I like to see are probably glyphosate and Sharpen mix is uh, pretty common these days and also paraquat gramoxone is also an option that many growers look at. I think if we're going to continue in a little bit of a dry pattern here and we have some nice days for spraying gramoxone, uh, nice warm days, uh, gramoxone works better in those cases. Uh, if we do get into a little cooler conditions and wetter, uh, the glyphosate sharpen is probably your number one bet in the, under those conditions. Uh, you can reference the NDSU weed guide, talk to your crop retailer on uh, desiccant options, but I think you should be able to find some good solutions to help this year uh, with the blackbird pressure, uh, maybe some local sclerotinia. Uh, blackbirds are probably going to be your biggest threat. You're going to want to get those sunflowers out of the field timely, and if we can get that done here but by the end of September, we should be in pretty good shape. My name is Mark Cartwright. I'm the Pioneer Field Agronomist in Northeast North Dakota and Northwestern Minnesota. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.